God bless you tonight, my brothers, sisters, and friends. We truly thank and praise God for blessing us to come back to you once again. We thank God for his many divine blessings that he has bestowed upon us. We truly thank and praise God for blessing us to see this day. All right, we're coming back tonight with video number 3B. We're talking about baptism in the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ. We have been talking about the three types of believers' baptisms, and tonight we're going to finish up on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, we want you to note that there is a disparity between being born of the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit, all right? There is a difference between being born of the Spirit and filled with the Spirit. Glory to God. So let's take our Bibles tonight and go to um, Acts chapter 8, beginning at verse 8. Acts chapter 8, beginning at verse 8. Glory to God. Now, you know, we have been talking about uh, this baptism, and we've been talking about how the, this baptism comes to give you power. Now, this baptism does not come to save you. You are already saved before you get this baptism. This baptism comes to give you power to become an effective witness, all right, and to do other things that the Lord Jesus has given us commandment and power to do. Glory to God, hallelujah, the works to do. So uh, Acts chapter 8, beginning at verse 8. Now we have some people out there teaching that you are not saved until you get this power. But that is incorrect information. That is not sound doctrine to teach that you are not saved until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. No, you are saved before you are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not going to come upon you. The power of God is not going to come upon you until you have already been born of the Spirit. See, you must be born of the Spirit first. Glory to God. So this baptism does not save you. It equips you with power to become an effective witness. Hallelujah. And to lay hands, be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Be able to cast out devils and do other works that the Lord has given us to do for the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 8, beginning at verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. Talking about the city of Samaria. Verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon. Which, be, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. You know, we have people today who uh, give out themselves to be some great one. They want to be something that they are not. They want to go beyond their gifting, all right? They want the people to know that they are somebody. They want to take the emphasis off of Jesus and the gospel and put it on them. They want the light to shine on them. But they are not of Christ. Hallelujah. It's not about you and I. It's about him. And what he has done. And we as children of God are only tools. Or instruments. That can be used. By him. Glory to God. Verse 10. To whom they all gave he. From the least to the greatest. Saying this man is the great power of God. People looked up to him and respected him and said, this man is the great power of God. He is really somebody. He is really spiritual. He is really of God, but he was not. All right, verse 11. And to him they had regard because that a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. He had bewitched them with sorcery. We have people today who are in the ministry bewitching people with sorceries. They have their own spirit. They are using the spirit of Satan to bewitch people. They are tied up in witchcraft and people don't have the spirit of God. They can't discern the difference between God's spirit and the devil's spirit. So they think that's God's spirit is working among them and in them, but it's the spirit of Satan. <clears throat> All right, verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. 
All right. So they began, these people believed Philip preaching when he came down and preached Christ to them. And they were saved. Verse 13. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered. Beholding the miracles and signs which were done. All right, verse 14. But when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. All right, so when the apostles back at Jerusalem had heard that Samaria had received the word of God, what does it mean that they received the word of God? Well, they were saved. They were born again. They were born of the Spirit. All right? They, got the, they received the first baptism. They received the baptism where they were baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was and is the agent who baptizes you into the body of Christ. So the Samaritans were already saved. They received the word. And then they were saved. Glory to God. All right, verse uh, 15, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. All right, now, it does not mean that they didn't have the Holy Ghost. It does not mean that they didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Once the, when the Samaritans were saved, they had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. But they had not received the Holy Spirit. That is, the Holy Spirit had not fallen upon them for them to receive power to become an effective witness or to become effective witnesses. All right? They were not filled with the Holy Ghost yet. Hallelujah. Where the evidence was going to be speaking in tongues. All right? That's what it's talking about. So, that, so what does this show us, Brother Harrison? It shows us that people can be born of the Spirit, which they have a measure of the Spirit, but they have not been filled with the Spirit, where they are given power, where the Holy Ghost has fallen upon them and they are given power. They have been given power. The Holy Ghost has fallen upon them. They have been given power. The Holy Ghost has fallen upon them and they have been given power. This is where you are filled with the Holy Ghost by Jesus Christ. He promised that he would fill them with the Holy Ghost or fill us with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ is the agent who causes us to be filled with the Holy Ghost or causes the Holy Ghost to come upon us. All right. And as we said before, that can happen right after you are born of the Spirit or baptized into the body of Christ. All right? Glory to God. It, it can happen uh, the minute you believe. It can also happen after you believe. Glory to God. And it can also happen before water baptism or after water baptism. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at verse 16. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. See, he wasn't fallen upon none of them. Now, he had come into them, but he had not yet fallen upon none of them. Two different, uh, two different distinct um, things there that take place. Glory to God. Two different distinct things that take place there. Born of the Spirit, coming in them, indwelling them, or falling upon them. Two different things. Uh, events. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Two different experiences. For he has yet, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. All right, verse 17. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Then laid the apostles had the gift of laying on of hands, and they received the Holy Ghost. All right. So we see the difference uh, in the differences in those uh, two <clears throat> types of experiences. Glory to God being born of the Spirit 
and being filled with the Spirit, having the indwelling of the Spirit, and having the empowerment or the endowment of the Spirit. Glory to God. That is given by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right. Now let's take our Bibles and go to uh, Acts chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. Acts chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. We're showing you some examples of how you can be born of the Spirit and yet be filled with the Spirit, or born of the Spirit and not be filled with the Spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You have that experience later on. Glory to God. So everybody out there that's teaching that in order for you to be saved, you have to have this experience is teaching false doctrine or teaching incorrectly. All right? <clears throat> they are not rightly dividing the word of truth. Those are two different experiences. And those that are teaching that you get it, uh, you get it when you get born again, they are also teaching false doctrine. Now let's say they, they are not teaching uh, they are not rightly dividing the word of truth. That's the best way to put it. Uh, they are not rightly dividing the word of truth. They are ignorant of the word of God. They have no knowledge of the two differences between being born of the Spirit where you are indwelt by the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit where you are given power to become an effective witness and to do the other works uh, of the ministry. All right, Acts chapter 19 Verse 1, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passing through the upper coast of Ephesus uh, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Verse 3, And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto him, Unto John's baptism. Verse 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Verse 5. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. All right? And all the men were about 12. All right? Now let's go back to verse 1. And it came to pass a while Apollos was at Corinth. Paul passing, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? Have you been Filled with the Holy Ghost since you believe? Have you been baptized with the Holy Ghost by Jesus Christ since you believe? All right? We can ask those questions because that's what he's asking them. So he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? See, we know he couldn't have been talking about it. Have you been born of the Holy Ghost or born of the Spirit since you believe? Because they, they already had that. See? They already had that indwelling of the Holy Spirit when they believe. Glory to God. So he was asking them, have you received the Holy Ghost? Have you been endowed with power? All right? Have you had this experience uh, being baptized with the Holy Ghost by Jesus Christ? That's what he's asking them. And they said unto him, we have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Verse 3, and he said unto them, until then were ye baptized. And they said, well, we had John's baptism. We just got John's baptism. Then Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. See? John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, and that is on Christ Jesus. Now, I, I would imagine, I'm not really sure right now, but I would imagine these disciples that, that Paul found uh, in Ephesus, they were probably all Jews because it's relating back to John's baptism. They were probably all Jews. And we'll have to do a little, uh, uh, a little studying on this to see if they specifically were Jews. They probably were. 
All right, he said, but when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus or by the authority of, all right, glory to God. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Now, not only did they speak with tongues, but they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. All right. Now, so uh, <clears throat> one thing that we need to understand here uh, is that this is another way that the, that the disciples were saved. See, there were many ways in the book of Acts that you could be saved. Many ways in the book of Acts that a person or one could be filled with the Spirit. All right? Or one could, be, or one could receive the Holy Spirit. In other words, one could have the uh, Christ baptizing them with the Holy Spirit. There were many ways you could get the, uh, the Holy Spirit. All right? But now today there is only one way that we can receive the Holy Spirit. One way that we can be saved. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that is through believing the gospel. That is through believing the gospel. All right? So we have to understand that Acts is a transitional book from Jews to Gentiles. Remember Jesus said in the beginning, he said, I came but to the lost house of Israel. All right? I came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who I came to. I came preaching the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, that is. I came preaching the kingdom of heaven to the Jews, not to the Gentiles. See, we receive salvation later on. See, what a lot of people have to understand in Christianity today, that the Jews are a specific chosen people, that God has a special love for them. We must not, we must uh, not just, uh, let's say we must, uh, we must not just group the Jews and the Gentiles all together uh, to some degree, all right? Uh, 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 let's put it this way. In some, some aspect or some ways, we are all one, but at the same time, the Jews are different from the Gentiles, all right? God promised the Jews a whole lot of things that he didn't promise us. See, there are a lot of things that are going to be fulfilled with the Jews. That's not going to have anything to do with us. Now we'll talk about that later on, but see, we got people who think that the church has replaced the Jews and that is not the case. What God promises chosen people in the beginning, all right, what he promised them in the beginning, he's going to fulfill. And a lot of that has nothing to do with us. Glory to God. We have been drafted in. We have been grafted in. I'm sorry. We have been grafted into the olive tree. We have been grafted in. We have been adopted. We are children by adoption. Let's understand that. Glory to God. Let's, let's quit trying to put Israel and the church all together in everything. There are some things they are separate from us, distinct from us in, all right? Glory to God. So we thank and praise God for this word on tonight. All right? Now we're going to end this, this, uh, this part uh, of this study of baptism. We hope that you've gotten a good understanding of the three kinds of believers' baptisms. All right? Now there are many other baptisms that one day we might get a chance to go into. But we're going to leave baptisms at this time, or baptism at this time, and we're going to move on. All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, we'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye-bye.